namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhassa Okay, so I, I'm, I'm, I am going through my, my notes and I'm going through my books and I thought, I think we need to um, start on this again and again, again and again, the eight mindful steps to happiness. You know what I'm going to talk about? Anybody? Huh? Dhamma Pala. Dhamma no. The path. The path? What path? The Eightfold Path, yes, the Eightfold Path. And uh, some, some people call it the Eight Mindful Steps to Happiness, which I completely agree. Um, now we are living in the 21st, 21st century, is that right? 21st or 22nd? 21st, still 21st century. And now we look at <clears throat> the technology that we have. Um, I think the technology, technology is at its peak. I, I don't think it will go on any further. They would improve. I don't think they would actually invent anything uh, more. But one thing that I, I have heard uh, just at this trip in San Francisco is um, some prophets prophes prophesied, people prophesied, can't remember his name, he said, after technology, actually he prophesied this uh, almost 20 years ago. He said, in the 21st century, there comes a time where technology is really advanced and, and things could just travel like, like this, faster than light. He actually had that um, uh, uh, prophesied. But he said, after technology, there comes a time where money, money, is is the most important thing in the world, and I think this is the time. And and you look at it, you look at it now. Um, people seems to be wealthier, uh, living off from a better point of view. Most of most of the world, I could say, most of the world. Uh, there are more different types of f food, right? Different types of fabric. And um, um, the medicine is better. People live longer, right? So you can see everything seems to be uh, improving towards the positive side. But yet, however, we look at it nowadays, especially in the last like half a year, a year or so, uh, you can see the morality, the mentality, the humanity is really going down. And even the environment seems to be, you know, kicking in also. Oh, look at all the snow in the East Coast. Look at the weather that we have here. And uh, look at the snow in Russia. It's just like snow tunnel that they have. It's, it's just, it's dawn on me. I looked at the snow in Russia and thought, what's wrong with the world? What's wrong with the world now? It's really, that world is so, like, the whole universe seems to be, revolving around something that we, we cannot see. And what I, th what I feel is the energy that we human being is inputting into the universe. And yes, there are a group of us here wanting to improve, um, to be a better person, but there are still a whole bunch of people who actually are not aware of what they are doing. Um, look at the ISIS. Look what they are doing. Uh, uh, today there is this um, person commenting that um, mm. it seems that the ISIS thing that is now is uh, a, a time of uh, apocalypse. Apocalypse? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it will be very sad if they are really going that way. It will be very sad. And 
And I think history will repeat itself with a lot of blood. Yeah? You mentioned the prophets. Sir. Uh, well, I'm thinking in terms of a man who isn't treated with the respect he deserves, and that is the Prince, Prince Charles. And all of this is in his book, My Vision of England. He won't, and the first thing he emphasized is that the humanizing of architecture. He said the major problem in society then, in the 80s, was the dehumanizing of too many districts being built without any center of soul or, you know, mm. passion. Mm. And he spoke about how the young people were living in these high rise ter terrible situations. I, I was in a similar place visiting a friend in Maskey in Aberdeen, and it was just a horrible sense of anomaly, you know? Mm. Mm. Everything was just crash, clang. Yeah. Awful. Yeah. So, I mean, in this. In this, at this time right now, we still have this human life. We cannot just say, "Oh, I'm going to go. I'm going to, I'm going to abandon this world. I'm going to just to go." It would be nice if we could do that, <laughs> and it would be nice if we could be sure that where we are going, right? We uh, would be nice if we are sure that we can be in a better place. It would be very nice, but we would know, right? So, so what is happening right now? How can be? How can we actually? attain the real happiness um, that does not have anything to do with this material world. Is it possible? Is it possible? And I, I, tru I truly believe that it is possible and I, actually a lot of ancient teachers have said that because at the Buddha's time uh, it, it was also, a, it was, at that time it was also turmoil and it was also like there, are, there, are, there were a lot of destructive warfare at that time in India and also economic dislocation, and also um, unfair treatment like um, lack of humanity, uh, the the caste system where people are you know the lower caste are actually like treated like like animals, and the upper caste were just like kings and you know all sorts of things. So so it's actually a similar similar society, a similar outlook, but it's uh, presented in different ways. That's all. So we are act I think we are actually facing the same kind of uh, uh, calamity right now. Yes, Maria? I was going to say, I think if you actually look back in history, you see cycles yes. like this has happened yes. constantly, where things got really, really good, yeah. and they started to fall apart. Yes. Um, the industrial evolution yes. is one. Yeah. Every, yeah. yeah. So, so, so at the Buddhist time, it happened the same thing. This is why the Buddha said, pointed out to us that you know things don't last, things are impermanent, but some some certain kind of happiness will last, and and he pointed out that you know this step by step mental training, this step by step mental training to achieve contentment. Which is possible, and also I think it, which is relevant in today's world, and and I think we are fortunate enough just to be able to hear those words. Whether we are able to really pursue on the path like uh, like what the Buddha wanted us to, it really doesn't matter. It's the other side of the story. But at least we are able to hear the words, and if we are fortunate enough we would pursue on such a path ourselves. And as I always say, nobody can, can do this for us. Nobody. We, we, we are the soul master. So, um, for, for whatever that we have learned uh, from, from the wise, we know there is no quick fix. There's no like, okay, now you sit there and you, you get enlightened and you're free. Sorry, there's no quick fix. As we talked the other day after Paul came back from his meditation, he said, it doesn't matter, Sifu, it doesn't matter whether it's going to take one lifetime, it doesn't matter whether it's going to take three lifetimes, it doesn't matter, I'm just going to go on doing it, right? 
So, you know, doesn't matter. And he said, whatever I see, whatever I go through, is everything is dukkha, all this dissatisfaction, this contentment, all this dukkha, it's just dukkha. And all we have to do with just to deal with this dukkha <laughs> is, is true. It's true, isn't it? So, for us to start off on this path, all we, there is one qualification that we need to possess. Eligibility <laughs> to be enrolled <laughs> onto this path is a very strong desire to actually to change our life. That is a that is a necessary qualification. Qualification is, I need to change. Within this lifetime, I need to start changing. That if if you don't have that desire, sorry. No matter how 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 much you know, how much knowledge you have, or how many times you have read the sutta, how many words you remember, you can memorize, you can recite. It doesn't make any difference. Because, because that's just knowledge. Those are just words. If you don't have this desire to, to change, you won't put the practice, you won't put that path into the practice. And the whole th important thing is you're able to practice, to really walk the talk, not just talk the talk. So that's the, that's the most important part is we need to have this strong desire to change. And by wanting to change, we need to adopt a new lifestyle. If I say, oh, I want to change, I want to change. But you go back to that old lifestyle. How can you change? Right? You can't. You can't. So, first thing is, you have a strong desire to change. And then, because of this strong desire, you need to, firstly, to change your lifestyle. To adopt a really new life pattern. And also to learn to see because after you adopt this new lifestyle you will start to see things very differently because you stand from a different angle you see things from a very different perspective right so so the thought of course the buddha said there are there are ex, ex, ex steps but each step is actually connected to the next step. It's just like the ladder. One step, if you go to the next step, you need to go through this step. If you don't go through this step, you, ca you cannot get to the other step. And the first step is actually very, very important. So, the, and uh, in order to change, in order to actually uh, correct yourself, the basic, the basic criteria is you need to know that you have such shortcomings. And where, where does that knowledge of shortcomings, knowing that you have such shortcomings come from? It's the mindfulness, right? So this mindfulness is a way of training really oneself to become aware of oneself and also to become aware of how things are. And, and when you become aware of how things are or becoming aware of how you are, then you try to find way to deal with it. Okay? Um, so, it is a very gentle, very gradual training. And this train, this eight steps actually is the path to end our miseries. Whether we can end our miseries this lifetime is not important but it's crucial that we start walking as soon as possible. Otherwise, we don't know whether we still have time to do it, right? Okay? So the Buddha said, what is happiness? A lot of people think happiness is, oh, I've got a, I've got a, a good car, I've got a good house, I've got a good husband, I have a warm family, and the children are good, and I have a good job, and I have good friends, and we have good coffee, and we have good cookies. And 
a lot of people think that this is actually what happiness of life means. But what do you think? No. Yeah. It's it's kind of happiness, but it's kind of a surface happiness. Yeah. It's kind of a, a, the the actually the the Buddha said it's a lesser type of lesser or I don't want to use the word lowest, but it's the lesser lesser type of happiness. Uh, so this this happiness derived from sensual indulgence or physical pleasure or material satisfaction don't last. They don't last because the enjoyment that comes from like seeing beautiful things or listening to good music or eating good food or driving a nice car and seeing the pleasant environments, they all so sort of could be immediately disappear just like that. Right? Or taste foods, for example, if we taste oh nice, nice food. After like this three inches of tongue, the sensation through this tongue and you swallow it, right there, you don't have any <laughs> sensation anymore. <laughs> How can you follow through with that happiness <laughs> into the bowel and or passing it out? <laughs> you can't, right? It's just these three inches of sensual satisfactions. And that's where we draw our happiness from. Ooh, that's really too so. Too, Sad. huh? Sad. Sad. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, that's what this, the 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 Buddha said. This is sort of like a lesser type of of happiness. <coughs> Especially if we continue to indulge indulge our five senses in searching for happiness uh, is so is so dangerous it's so dangerous because we will be constantly falling into the trap of craving right for example if we if I constantly like to sort of um, read those uh, we call what the, the gossip magazines, you know, those are uh, by, the, by the teller of the superstores. All these gossip magazines, you know, this, this couple with that couple, that star with that star and all this. Yeah? So television keeps throwing the word crave at us. Oh, it's crave? In big letters on the screen. In but the, the screen. television is the one it's which makes people crave. crave. <laughs> you know, I yeah. find it quite idiotic. Right? <laughs> but that, that's what it makes people to crave, right? All these ads and all these uh, movies and all these uh, TV series that make people crave for more, right? So all these gossip magazines and, and people walk by and their eyes catch one of these gossip magazines and see the images on the, on the front cover. Oh, let's pick it up and flip, flip, flip. Oh, no, this is not. Oh, this. What? The eyes catch that craving, that craving start from the, the eyes isn't, I mean, the eyes are not responsible. It's the mind that is craving, but the eyes is just sending all these messages into the back of the mind. And the mind says, oh, this is nice. Eye essential pleasure. The eye is pleasure. Oh, let us, let us read more. Or let us hear more. Let us listen more. Let us eat more. Let us smell more. Or let us touch more. And this is all these, all these, the mind is actually doing all this job, asking the sense, all asking the senses to stretch out to crave for more. Because the mind is uh, deluded. The mind thinks that these things can last. And the mind wants these things last. That's one big, big thing. It's the mind wants these things things to last. That's why we are constantly reaching out to fulfill the desires of these five senses. Right? And so that is a very, very dangerous step. So ask yourself, once you start to actually crave through any of this sense, check how long does that satisfaction last? Split second, 
it could be immediately gone. But you don't realize that it's gone, or you realize that it's gone, and you want to continue. So you continue. You continue eating. You continue reading. You continue listening. That's you know that urge to continue. That's that's the trouble. Okay. So this indulgence actually can lead us to really depriving ourselves, and also can lead us to really deep addiction. That's why people are addicted, because they are constantly reaching out, and constantly wanting to fulfill all these desires, the sensual desires. So, the the Buddha the Buddha actually um, talk. A, 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 um, a story about the baby being tied down by thin fr- threads in five places: the wrist, the ankles, and the throat. Thin th- thread, but even thin threads can actually tie this baby down because the baby is young. The baby doesn't have the force to actually break the break the, th- the threads. But an adult like us, or even a, 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 like a younger child, can break those threads easily, right? That's what the, the Buddha said. If a person who who is like um, who is very discern, dis, discern a discerning person, can break away from all these five sensual pleasures, can break away easily, because they can see, they can see, they have good judgment. And they have sound judgment, and they have outstanding judgment. They know I should not be tied down by this. I should break away. They have that desire to break away, and that person can break away. So, check ourselves if we start to seek this kind of happiness, and we should actually reflect on ourselves. Is this the right kind of judgment? Is this a, should I go on this way, or should I break away? Ask yourself. And once you start to ask yourself, actually, that is already a mindfulness. That is already being mindful of your own actions, of your own thoughts, of your own desires. And once you start to be mindful, that's a possibility for you to break away from those desires. Otherwise, there's. Never a chance to break away without mindfulness. That's why the eightfold path is not just an eightfold path. It's actually an eightfold, an eight steps of mindfulness. Because every step actually entails a lot of mindfulness. Otherwise, it cannot be performed. It cannot be done. It cannot be achieved. So, so the 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 Buddha said, a baby being tied down by thin threads, but us. If we are mindful enough, we will be able to break away. And if we are able to break away from all this sense, sensual indulgence, um, we don't, we don't, we will be able to actually cut down on our craving. But mind you, we are all human beings, so you don't want to actually push yourself too far. And otherwise, your whole you you will be so be an outcast among you know your your friends, your family, and people think that you're weird. Too, Too late. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> too late. Too late. Being thinking that you're weird or oh, everyone else does. Oh, everyone else does. <laughs> Not me. Not you. No. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> But you know, sometimes we still can enjoy this worldly happiness. Okay, mm-hmm. don't become a piece of stone or a, 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 a you know piece of rock and no feelings and and don't enjoy and you still you still need to enjoy life a little bit. You know. I enjoy every minute I'm walking on this earth. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Yes. But it gives you freedom. Yes. At the same time, I don't have no 
no I regret. Where to begin to explain that, but it does. Good. It, it sends you by, it does, because it you boundaries, but it gives you a lot of regret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it gives you that kind of happiness that no no material gain can compare. No, the family can't wreck it anymore either. Like that they cannot wreck it anymore, no, yeah. No, they can't, and yet you can still, I'm actually closer to my family now. Than before. Than I have been, and Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. And at the same time, more distant. I can't explain that. I know. <laughs> yes, yes. There is distance. There is distance, but yet you are very close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. It's been an incredible yeah. Years. Yeah. There is a lot of space between you and the family. Mm -hmm. But yet you are very compassionate towards them. Mm -hmm. That's 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 the word. Mm -hmm. You are very spacious. That anything that happens to them. I cannot say that they cannot hurt you anymore. It still hurts you. Oh, yeah. But it still hurts you. But the hurt is different. Yeah. It's not that, like the, before. It's, it's not personal. No, yeah. It's not yeah. personal yeah. anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. So still, you know, when you sit together, you enjoy a cup of coffee, and you enjoy a good book, you enjoy good music. Hey, this is nice coffee. You know, I like it. You know, <laughs> Oh, this is good, Dilly Ball. Let us have more. <laughs> and summer is coming. Summer is coming, yeah. Enjoy it, enjoy it, yeah. So, and, uh, yeah, Bill? And there was a, a comment from Sir Thomas More, the uh, counselor of Henry VIII, was, happy, was good health a positive pleasure? Of course it is. I was about when people have good health, they don't even think about it. They only it's think true. about it when they've lost it. It's true, it's true, it's yeah. true, it's true. So, yeah, it's true. So, we are actually very fortunate to have good health and to be able still to walk mm -hmm. and to hear, even though one day we may need hearing aid, but it's still okay. You know, as long as you're satisfied, you know, the happiness is just so, it comes so easily, right? And uh, so, please remain as a human being and enjoy life with your family and uh, your friends. And and uh, and when you watch a movie, enjoy it. When you when you drink a cup of coffee, enjoy it. You know, but knowing at the background, knowing the nature of that existence is depends on conditions. All this happiness, this lesser happiness depends on conditions. When they are favorable, you are happy because things work out according to your wishes. I want Tim Horton coffee and there's Tim Horton coffee just around the corner because of all these conditions that come. But what happens if these conditions, good conditions, favorable conditions disappear? Your happiness is gone because you rely on these favorable conditions to bring your happiness. And these favorable conditions come dependent on conditions, right? So, it's out of your control. When something is out of your control, if you don't see the nature of its own existence, then there's a very likelihood that you will end up in a lot of miseries. Understand? Yeah? So, so be, be, be smart too. Uh, while enjoying life, but be smart to see the nature of existence behind all these things, because these all depends on conditions arising and passing. When conditions arises, um, when conditions arise to bring such a sort of lesser happiness, don't get too elated. Okay, when conditions pass and this lesser happiness disappear, don't get too depressed because you know these all come as a, you know, as conditions, depending on conditions, the, all this dependent origination. So you don't, you, the, you don't, you don't get hurt too much. The problem today I find is society. People talk about the pursuit of looking for happiness, and they never mention the word satisfaction. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because a lot of people think that happiness comes from material satisfaction. A lot of people do. That's what. That's why you know they can they can spend million of dollars fight, you know, 
building a home uh, with eight rooms in there, but just two people. And you, each hour of the night, you sleep in one room? Yeah. <laughs> right? That would be fine, but you'd be very unhappy in the morning having to make all of those beds. <laughs> <laughs> the, maids, the, the maids would do it. Do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? The, they probably have t- uh, 12, a dozen of mates, yeah? Okay. <laughs> so, remember all these conditions are unpredictable, all these conditions are unstable, and if we trust them, if we seek them, if we try to hang on to them, it's very likely that we will be end up, ending up in a lot of miseries, and we will suffer. So, so remember that, that the, whole, the whole thing about this, uh, 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 lesser happiness.